At this time, we'd like to invite to the podium uh, Senator Dr. The Honorable Floyd Morris, who's a CARICOM Special Rapporteur on Disability Affairs. Please welcome him with a round of applause. Mr. Master of Ceremony, Mr. Glenn Niles, other distinguished guests and specially invited ladies and gentlemen, students, participants, presenters, a pleasant good morning to you all. It is my signal honor to be here to participate in this very special conference being hosted by the Down Syndrome Family Network. When the invitation was extended to me a couple months ago by Lisa, I wholeheartedly accepted because I viewed it as a part of fulfilling my mandate as rapporteur for persons with disabilities within the region. And so I made all plans to be here straight into next week until lo and behold the events intervened and so I have to return to Jamaica tomorrow morning, bright and early, as they say. But I am happy at the conference, and I am happy at how things have taken shape thus far between yesterday and today promises to be another great day. And I want to commend Glenn and Lisa for the hospitality and for organizing this conference to sensitize and make the nation aware of issues confronting individuals with Down syndrome and by extension persons with disabilities. The theme that we are working with is leave no one behind. And it is an appropriate theme for an occasion such as this. Because you see, whilst it is that governments and individuals within the private sphere are making plans to advance the development of the society. There are some who believe that the plans should encapsulate only those who are able-bodied. And for some strange reason, persons with disabilities who constitute the largest minority group in the world based on the World Report of Persons with Disabilities 2011, where between 15 to 17 percent of the global population is estimated to have a disability. So you cannot be making plans and preparation to develop your society and leave 15 to 17 percent of your population behind. That is not inclusive. That is not building a society that is participatory. And so we have to make sure that persons with disabilities are included in every aspect of national development in your country. You see, in 1981, a critical juncture, I believe, 
in global development emerge. Because that was the year that was declared by the United Nations as the year for the disabled. Out of that declaration, we saw a number of actions taking place. It signaled the period when we start seeing some changes emerging in terms of attitude towards persons with disabilities. Because prior, there were individuals who believed that persons with disabilities should be confined to welfare. They should be confined to their homes. The state and the church should take care of them because persons with disabilities cannot make any contribution to society. By 1993, we saw the establishment of the standard rules for the equalization of opportunities for persons with disabilities. But the standard rules was a broad policy framework to guide the globe in terms of improvement for persons with disabilities. But the standard rules were not binding legally. And so by 2001, progressive countries like Mexico saw it fit to advocate for the establishment of a global treaty that had legal effect to protect the rights and dignity of persons with disabilities. And that was when the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities was born. And by 2006, the global treaty governing persons with disabilities was established. The United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities that has become the Bible in terms of how persons with disabilities ought to be treated across the globe. And this has triggered significant activities across the world, including the Caribbean. Because whilst negotiations were taking place on the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, ministers of labor and social security within CARICOM met in Jamaica in 2004 to chart a course for improving the conditions of persons with disabilities. And that witnessed the formulation of the Kingston Accord. But nothing came of it. And in 2013, again, ministers of government under the guidance of CARICOM met in Haiti, Patientville, to declare a roadmap for how persons with disabilities in the Caribbean ought to be treated. And in 2013, December, we saw the establishment of the Declaration of Patientville. Including in that declaration was the creation of a special rapporteur for persons with disabilities to guide and drive the disability agenda in the region. And I stand here on the shoulders of CARICOM to declare across the region that Caribbean societies are not going to be the same again because we are going to be advocating and we are going to be pushing in every space to make sure that the conditions of persons with disabilities are improved right across CARICOM. We believe that no one must be left behind because if it is that we are to become a truly inclusive CARICOM space, 
every Caribbean citizen must be included in the development agenda. So it doesn't matter if you are blind. It doesn't matter if you are deaf. It doesn't matter if you have a physical disability. It doesn't matter if you have Down syndrome. Once you are a Caribbean citizen, you have the right to participate in every single developmental activity within the Caribbean. And we are going to be relentless. And as I said yesterday, in speaking to the NGOs of persons with disabilities in your country, that we are stronger together and there is a need for a coming together of persons with disability groups to advocate for issues relating to persons with disabilities. And using the Declaration of Patientville and the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities as a guide to formulating that roadmap, that pathway to improving the condition of every single person with disability in your country, we will see significant changes. But I said to them also that if it is that you put together your grouping and you are in need of support and assistance, call the warlord Mr. Bill Niles. I am ready to be on the battlefield for persons with disabilities all over the Caribbean because the time has come for us to have an inclusive Caribbean for all our citizens. I must say, I must say that I'm heartened at some of the progress that I have heard being expressed relating to persons with disabilities. But one of the things that we have to see taking shape over the next couple of years, and I've cited my priorities for the next three years as driving the legislative agenda, ensuring that greater employment levels are created for persons with disabilities, education of persons with disabilities, and public education. But in the context of this presentation, I just want to let you know that without us seeing significant inclusion of persons with disabilities in the education system across the Caribbean, we are not going to experience the sort of transformation that we want to see taking place within our societies. Because education is a major means of socialization. That is where attitudes are shaped. That is where attitudes are developed as it relates to different social groups. And if we don't adopt and embrace an inclusive education system to make sure that persons with disabilities are included in the education system, then we are going to see a perpetuation of those negative attitudes towards persons with disabilities. And I am calling upon the governments within CARICOM, just as how multilateral and bilateral institutions through their programs and policies have ensured that we liberalize the economy to make sure that the private sector can participate and flourish. I am calling for a liberalization of the education system across the Caribbean so that persons with disabilities can be included and so they can flourish and progress just as anyone else. I am a firm believer in education. Because 30 years ago, I got blind. Some six years after developing glaucoma whilst attending high school. 
And whilst attending high school, the teachers in the education system at the time never understood or knew how to treat with such a situation. I was just left to language through the system and graduated without a single subject in 1986. And 31 years after, I graduated from the University of the West Indies with a PhD. All of this came because I decided, having gotten blind, that I was not going to make my disability detain me. I was not going to make individuals and the barriers that they place in the ways of persons with disability to restrict me. And I left, went to an institution that gave support to persons who are blind in the the city of Kingston got rehabilitated, went to my co evening college, got my CXE subjects, went to the University of the West Indies, completed a first degree, completed a second degree, and completed a PhD ultimately. And I am saying to individuals here that if one person with disability can do it, and I know that there are many other persons with disabilities. I'm just citing an example. That if you give the persons with disabilities an opportunity to participate in the education system, they are likely to achieve just as anyone else. And so we have to open up the educational institutions, make them more inclusive, make them more accessible, so that persons with disabilities can maximize their full potential. I believe that we are venturing into a new season. And I have every hope that we are going to see a Caribbean that is more inclusive and more responsive to the needs of persons with disabilities. And I want you to know that the time for action is right now. And the mere fact that you are here today is a part of that action. And I want to commend the organizers of the conference and to let you know that whatsoever I can do to assist the process and the drive to make sure that we have an inclusive Caribbean and a better Trinidad and Tobago for persons with disabilities, I stand ready to do so. Because injustice against a person with disability in Trinidad and Tobago is an injustice against a person with disabilities in Jamaica. Injustice against a person with disability in Antigua is injustice against a person with disability in Guyana. Injustice against a person with disability in Barbados is an injustice against a person with disability in Cuba. Wherever you are in the Caribbean, once there is an injustice against persons with disabilities, all persons with disabilities are affected. And we must unite and march forward to make sure that we have a more inclusive Caribbean for all persons, inclusive of those with disabilities, and leave no one behind. God bless you, and all the best for the remainder of the conference.